So you're about 55 and you have approximately $300,000 in savings. And you know that retirement is right around the corner, five, seven, 10 years down the road, and you have questions and you have concerns. You wanna make sure that you never outlive your money so you're not a burden on loved ones. You wanna make sure you pay the least amount of taxes. When you turn on your social security, all of those things are a concern. Hi, I'm Tony Hansman. if we haven't met, and I'm with Guardian Financial. We're a wealth management firm and we help families who are in or near retirement. And today, I put together a hypothetical case, so let's jump right into it. So here we have Jim and Pam hypothetical. They're both 55 years of age and they both want to retire 10 years from now at the age of 65. They're, we're gonna let Jim live to be 92 or we're gonna let Pam live to be 94 years of age. They have income needs, they've said, in this hypothetical situation now, of $70,000. So in 10 years from now with inflation, that's gonna feel more like $80,000. They have two girls and they want to put into their once column or once portfolios uh, $20,000. They're going to give each girl $10,000 for a future wedding. Nothing in the wish columns for this scenario, but in the savings column, we've got $275,000 in 401ks and IRAs and $25,000 in after-tax accounts. Now right here, I want to say this is very common where most people have a lot of money in tax-deferred places. I'd like to see a little bit more balance between these uh, tax deferred accounts, after tax accounts, and then a tax free account. If we can balance those out a little bit, that would be uh, a good possibility for them to do or work on over the next 10 years before they get the age of 65. So another thing that's very common in 401ks, those Pam and Jim will have to pick out their own investments and they don't get an advisor helping them a few times throughout the year to maybe rebalance those and, and adjust those. So they could be completely out of their risk tolerance. We definitely want to look into that. And their biggest concerns are going to be this. Tony, what should we be doing for the next 10 years to prepare ourselves for retirement? They're concerned about income planning. How do we make sure that we never outlive our money so we're not a burden on loved ones? Investment planning, there we go with making sure that we're within our right risk tolerance. And tax planning, hey, we'll pay our first share of taxes, but by gosh, we don't wanna pay more than we have to. What can we do to reduce our tax obligation? And then social security planning. Now in this scenario here, I have social security being turned on at 67. And if they retire at 65, that means we're gonna to have to dip into assets for the first two years. Now, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. That's just how I set this particular case up. So let's go ahead and jump into the financial software and see what it looks like. So let's take a look at Jim and Pam's goals. You can see we have needs, wants, and wishes. In the needs column, they have $70,000. That's what they want when they retire uh, in 10 years from now. And obviously we talked about that that's going to be much higher due to inflation. When Jim passes away, Pam will take about half of that income for those last two years of her life. In the once column, you can see we have weddings, two weddings, two girls, each $10,000 for each of their weddings. One in 2024 for $10,000 and one in 2027 uh, for the second wedding. So now let's go ahead and take a look at their current scenario. So let's take a look at Jim and Pam's current scenario. On this screen, we're going to run 1,000 different trials on their current 401ks that they have at work. So in a second, we're gonna hit this button, but I wanna explain what's happening here. This is going to show 1,000 different simulations, 1,000 different trials of potential sequence of returns in the future. As we all know, we don't get such a rate of return as 5555 every single year. We don't get a 7%, a 7%, a 7%, a 7% every single year. We all know that it's 10% maybe one year, down 10%, up 5%, down 12%, up 20%, down 30%. It's all over the place. Nobody knows what's gonna happen in the future, but this is going to simulate a 1,000 different possibilities. So let's go ahead and let's run on different uh, thousand trials and see what happens. So as you can take a look and see, we get a probability score of success of 67%. Now, what does that mean? It means that we had 670 successes out of the thousand trials, meaning at the end of both of their lives, there was still money there. They didn't run out of money. The red lines represent that they did run out of money and those were unsuccessful trials. So 67, not the best score. 
let's take a look at how the probability of success score works. So below confident zones represents anything below a 70 score. And an in confidence zone is 70 to 90. So we really wanna see everybody at least get to the green zone. And as an advisor, and I'm sure as yourself, you'd like to be in the above confidence zone, which is 90 or higher. Anything in the 90s is gonna give you uh, more options as you're in retirement. So we're gonna close that out. And we're gonna to go to the next screen over here. And we're going to take a look at maybe their first scenario. So here you can see, they score now a, a 77. All we simply did is got involved with their 401k. See, most people in their 401ks, they're 100% on their own. And when they start a new job and they pick out their investments, they don't have an advisor to help them with that. And they do their best to pick out what they think is right. And often for years, it's never looked at. So they could be in funds that need to be you know, rebalanced or, or tweaked. And so all we simply did is retweet that portfolio and it took them from that prior score up to a 77. So now we're in the green zone. Let's see what else we can do to improve that score even more by going to the play zone. So here we are in the play zone. We have a score of 77. Let's see if we can't get that up just a little bit. Now I'm not saying that we want, want Jim to, but let's just take a look at how this uh, could potentially help his score. So let's just see and pretend as if Jim was open to working one year longer. So let's take him from 65, slide him out to 66, and see if that changes the score at all. So here we are at 66, we go from a 77 to an 88. So a big change in our score there. And let's go ahead and make Pam work for one more year. She's probably not gonna like that, but when we take Pam to 66, it takes it to an 89, really close to being in that above competent zone. So just for fun, not that we would, but let's just ask uh, Jim and Pam to pretend as if they're gonna take care of themselves and uh, kill out those want needs and not fund anything for the two daughters wedding. So we're gonna take this 10,000 and take it all the way to zero for daughter one. And we're gonna take the second one from $10,000 all the way to zero and see if that changes our score just a little bit. 1%, so they're 91. So not that big of a change. So let's go ahead and let's put the girls back in there. Let's take them to back up to $10,000 for their daughter two and $10,000 for daughter one. And let's take a look at that score is 89. And let's just see if we just took maybe from six or $70,000 down to let's say $65,000 a year and see what that looked like. And so our score goes all the way to a 98. Now we're way above our confidence zone. So as you can see, there's a lot of different things that you can be tweaking inside of uh, your retirement plan long before uh, you get ready to retire, in this case, 10 years. If you take a look down here, we're not gonna do it today, but we could also go into our savings. We could go into, maybe we wanna save more. Maybe we could go into the portfolios and tweak the portfolios. These are just a few of the things that we could possibly do. We may wanna look at when to turn on social security. Now in this scenario, they retired at 65, but I have them turning on the social security at 67. So that means they would have had to dip into the portfolio for those first two years before social security uh, was turned on. Now I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's how the hypothetical case was in case you're wondering. Now we could tweak that just a little bit if we wanted to, um, but we're just not going to. The plan for this was for you to understand, number one, Know your retirement score. I think everybody should know what it is and have it reevaluated at least every single year. This is just a snapshot in time. You want to reevaluate it because life changes and so will your score. Uh, number two, figure out what if you how long you should be working, what your needs are, what your wishes are. Maybe the savings plan needs to be a little bit more. Maybe it could be a little bit less. If you know that score, it's going to help you figure out how to make those changes. And then also remember, Try not to overfund your tax deferred accounts. This is one of the biggest problems that I see when people are in their 50s saving for retirement. See if it makes sense for you and your family to have three accounts that are a little bit more equal size. The tax deferred account, which is the 401k or the IRA. The after tax accounts, that's the one that they had $25,000 in. That could be a savings checking account, something like that, the, the bank. And then my favorite is that Roth account, which is tax-free growth. And if they have a better balance between those, I believe in my opinion, they're gonna have more options when they go into retirement. So if this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. And 
If you get a chance, if you need any help, if you'd like to know what your retirement score is, our information is in the description box. Just simply reach out to us. We're happy to help you out. And as always, remember to consult a licensed professional who understands your specific goals and dreams.